It's snooker finals this week, hence my epic t-shirt. Yes, I'm a snooker fan and proud. So, question and answers vlog regarding surgery. I get loads of questions across Tumblr and Facebook and here, so I thought it would be a really good idea to just put them all in one place. So thank you all very much for your questions regarding lower surgery. Let's get to it. Did you get hair removal on the NHS or did the London team prescribe it? This is a funny one. The current thing is, is if the London team don't say you need it, then you can't get it funded. You need to be hairless underneath here. They use the underneath bit to make the urethra. So you don't want hair in that bit because obviously hair in the urethra pipe is really not healthy. So if you have hair there, you will be likely be referred. I had some hair there, um, but my arm was particularly hairy. But with my clinic, my therapist simply just put the referral through. I then got a list of clinics that were near my area that would do it. Um, and then I just made an appointment. So it's worth checking with your gender clinic to see if they will do the referral. And if not, it's worth asking for your doctor as well. Did you need your partner to help you full time when you were healing or was he still able to work? I needed Drew and he was amazing to take some time off with me. I needed him full time really for the first week at home. But I'd say if you can have your partner home with you, then say two weeks after the surgery for at home, just so you can kind of settle in because that's the hardest bit is settling back home getting in and out of a normal bed rather than a hospital bed getting on and off the toilet when you haven't got like the arm things to hold on to etc etc so yeah a couple of weeks he took off and i'm so grateful to him for that how did your you and your partner learn to take care of your new phallus this this is quite an interesting one really trial and error i mean you're sent home with a post-op care sheet as to what to do what not to do etc etc but it's very much like learning on the job. Um, I've always often compared this to like having a baby. Not that I've had one, but I can kind of imagine that you kind of know what you're doing. You've seen other people do it, but then you get home with this baby and reality hits and you've got to look after it. It was very, very much like that. So we just had to kind of work out what looks okay and when we should kind of ask for help. We had to then work out what kind of bandages to use to prop him up at a 45 degree angle ways to get in and out of the shower, ways to kind of like share holding him so I had an arm free to get in the shower. It's very much just trial and error and lots and lots of patience between the two of us. Um, when you're close to someone and you love someone, it just works. You just end up finding your own rhythm as time goes on. By a week home, it was okay. The first few couple of days being home, it was so scary for the both of us trying to work out how best to look after me and my new phallus. But then after a week, we'd, we'd adjusted, really. Let's talk balls. I get lots of questions about my balls. Interesting. So, the biggest one is... <laughs> biggest. Have you had the implants for the balls yet? Yes, I have. I've had one ball created. And how do they create this ball? And what gives it bulk and weight? Well, there's some... There's like little silicone implants. They've got little mini stress balls. They come in three sizes. Funnily enough, when Drew and I went to talk to Mr Christopher, he rolled a prosthetic testicle across the desk towards Drew and said, there you go, that's what he'll have. So he knew what kind of size I was looking at. So that is kind of softish, but it's got some weight to it. And that's what gives your ball the shape and the weight. So how do they create the scrotal sac? Well, what they do is they put the testicular implant into your labia and then what they then do is over time that obviously will stretch and then when they make the scrotoplasty they will then fuse the two labia together so you have a ball inside and obviously at stage three you have a pump in the other side and then that gives the impression of a scrotal sac and it feels and looks like a scrotal sac. Why have you only got one ball? Lots of people want to know this. Well, they create one ball now and they create the final one later. If you're having the prosthetic device as I am, the other ball will contain the pump to inflate the erectile device. So in early stages they'll create you one ball because they need to put the pump into a healed cavity. So by having the ball done early, at the later stage they rem remove the testicle implant and then replace it with a pump and then using that testi testicular implant, I can't even say this, they put it into the other ball. So does that make sense? Where is my ball? This is another common question. Mr Christopher especially likes to mix things up. So some people get a ball in the first stage, some people get a ball in the second stage. Everybody, of course, gets all their balls in the third stage. 
So of course some people come home and go, where is my ball? Well, if you haven't got it done at first, you'll usually have it done at the second. However, they are at the moment saying that they're not going to do any testicular implants until the third stage. They'll create the scrotum in the early operations, but they won't actually put the testicular prosthesis in until the final stage. I do not know why this is. I know there has been an, a recall on one of the implants they're using at the moment. That could be why, but it could just be like their lists want to be changing things up a bit. have to say though, not having the ball at the first stage would be a blessing, I think. There's so much going on down there that that extra swelling and extra pain was really not welcomed. But then again, I don't think it's going to be welcomed in any stage. But that's why, basically. If they run out of time, they'll do it at a later stage. But at the moment, they just seem to be mixing things up. Why do you have staples in your bum? Well, what they do when they take the skin from your forearm is they take grass from underneath each buttock to replace on the forearm. They usually take it from under the buttocks because then it's kind of hidden and you get free bum lift. Although they have also taken it on the very top of the bum, the, the lower back, and from the thigh as well, I believe. Um, the reason why they can't just use the bum skin in the first place is because it doesn't have the right amount of nerves to hook up to get the good amount of sensation in the phallus, and it has also not got the right amount of fat, I believe. So that is why. Why have you got stitches that go around your groin and up into your tummy? Well, that's because they do nerve hook up. They take nerves from the arm as well as the artery. So you have the artery going through the phallus and up, which they attach to one of the muscles in the abdomen. So that's why you see the big line coming up into the abdomen. And the ones on the groin is because they take two nerves to run through the groin to the back of the clitoris to give you sensation and into the phallus. Is Finn Jr. bendy? It most certainly is. It did look very solid in the beginning, and it was because it was swollen, so it was quite heavy and solid and fat. Now the swelling has gone down, he's quite flaccid. Um, I kind of always thought I'd just have this massive kind of like penis in my pants, but because I, because I was only used to like having the peacock, whereas because he's soft, you know, he does actually fold and inside my pants quite nicely. So yes, he's very, very soft and lovely. Will you be able to have penetrative sex with your new phallus? Absolutely. Yes, not yet. Well, with a bit of blue petering, you can now. At stage three, I'll have the erectile device fitted, which means that I will be able to get an erection and use my penis for penetrative sex. Epic. Do you get to choose the size of your penis? In a word, no. It all depends on how much skin you have on your forearm. London team tend to go between four and five and a half inches, I believe. The trouble is, if you go too too big, you've then got to hook up the urethra, and the longer you've got to kind of extend it, obviously, the more issues they have. <clears throat> so it does depend, as I say, on the amount of skin you've got in your forearm, and they don't want it too big because of the urethral hookup issue. Saying that, though, you can discuss with them if you want a smaller phallus. I did actually discuss that in early days myself when I was concerned about the arm graft and what have you. So they are op open to discussing things, so by all means do discuss your concerns with them for a smaller phallus or a bigger one and have Miss Christopher laugh at you and tell you that he's not making porn stars. Do you get to choose how the head of the penis looks? I.e. can you choose an uncut foreskin look for aesthetics? Um, because I've seen some guys with the glands and others look like they've got uncut foreskin. <clears throat> the reason you've seen that is because it's at different stages. The glands is created at stage 2 of phalloplasty. So that's why you're seeing these two differences, where you're seeing one penis that doesn't have a, a glands and one that does. The reason mine looks quite distinctly different is that I've got self-harm scars running around my wrist here, which have ended up at the end of my penis. So actually mine looks like I've, I've got foreskin, but I haven't. The glands is created in stage two, and we can't choose how that looks. We just get given what looks like a circumcised male penis head. Do you have any sensation, and we, when you have sex, will you be able to feel it? Yes, eventually I will be able to feel it. Um, the nerves, the hook, the nerve hookup I talked about earlier, gives you sensation in your penis, both tactile and erotic sensation. So the end goal is, and is very good with our forearm phalloplasty, to be able to have an orgasm through my penis. It takes a while for nerves to grow back, so you know they say kind of upwards for a year you're still developing sensation, and obviously with having operations things are going to keep going numb, so 
some sensation will come back between operations but full sensation won't come back completely until you're left alone to heal and the nerves can then grow back and at the moment currently at three months post-op I don't have any sensation in my new equipment at all but all my old sensation all my sensation in my old equipment is fine is it odd not knowing when you'll have an orgasm again how is it dealing mentally and physically with this yeah I was worried about that with a healthy high sex drive now well healthy compared to what it used to be I did really worry about that um, and I was starting to need one <laughs> at about like, three weeks post-op but I was too scared to do anything at four uh, four weeks post-op I did have an attempt and I successfully did orgasm using my old equipment now at three months post-op Drew and I are having sex again with a little bit of help from Blue Peter and it's all fine so actually you don't have to wait that long between stages at all there are ways around it and you just have to get to know your new body and the way things work and just be a little bit creative okay so i hope that answers all of your questions thank you so much for sending them in i will post a copy of all of these questions so far onto my tumblr blog so you can see them all in detail i've had some fantastic questions from people that weren't whole videos in themselves so the first of those will be uploaded this Wednesday and that's regarding coping with life around transition. So how do you manage to just carry on living day to day while still having to have surgical interventions and what have you? Fantastic question. So that will be uploaded on Wednesday to keep your eyes out for that. In the meantime, have a fantastic week everybody. I hope it's off to a great start and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye bye.